Today's video is going to include two things. Blender, which is an open source software with a very large support community, and Autodesk 3ds Max. These softwares are very interchangeable, if you will, because if you start out with Blender, but your goal was to learn 3ds Max, you can do Blender absolutely free and gain those necessary interface and modeling skills early without the cost so that you're not buying a $250 a month or one year subscription for around $2,500 or a three year subscription for around $5,000. Those are kind of expensive costs to be doing in the process of learning. So it would be advisable to just go ahead and learn a free open source software that has transferable skills. Now for me, I'm gonna stay with Blender, but I'm also teaching myself 3ds Max because I found it super easy now that I'm already skilled enough to work the 3D interface in Blender. But enough of that, let's get started and I'm gonna show some very interesting comparisons and how easy it actually is once you've learned Blender. Let's take a quick look at some simple movements in the 3D viewport for Blender. Now, if you middle mouse wheel, you can pan around in a perspective view and if you use the number pad, say one, two, three, you can get different views like seven or even zero to pull in the camera view, which is very nice. And you can use control middle mouse to kind of zoom in. You can use shift middle mouse. This will move the entire viewport. You can scroll the middle mouse in and out. And these are some very basic movements like G for grab and then place the object where you want it. Control Z will go back. You can press G and you can move this into an off grid position, or you can just right click to drop that. Now let's go over to 3ds Max and take a look at some basic movements that we can do in that software that are easily transferable. Now over here in 3ds Max, we'll know right away we don't have a cube, so we're gonna have to go over to the command panel select our standard primitives and then choose something. I'll just go with box and cube and then I'm going to draw a cube. Now if I press G, it's not going to grab this object like it did in Blender. It's just going to disappear the grid. So I'll hit G again. Now I can hold down Alt and middle mouse and begin to pan. If I hold Shift and middle mouse, I can move the viewport back and forth and then Control middle mouse will move it around a little more freely. Uh, of course, the mouse wheel is going to do some of the same similar things. And if I just want to scale this real quick, the control Z option will work just the same. And of course, if we're off and we don't have this uh, where we can see it properly and trying to move this around gets frustrating, you can just press Z and it'll zoom back in and then you can middle mouse and shift middle mouse back to your position. There's also some other orbit buttons here. So you can leave this in more of a perspective kind of orbiting mode. Now, one thing I really do like about 3ds Max is the gizmo here that says top, back, right, front, left, and bottom. This is extremely useful. Blender's gizmo is good and functional in the same way, but just doesn't have that neat little cube with the words. But you do see your Z up position and your Z down position for negative and positive. So you do have these here. It's just a little bit different. You'll see negative Y and negative X. So if you were upside down, you would know it right here as well. So just a little bit different functionality and preference. Now I wanna show you guys how to move panels around and change the layout of your workspace to suit your needs. This is a really cool feature. And then we're gonna do the same thing in Blender. Customizing your layout in any software is gonna be very important. If you're familiar with it in Blender and you want it to look very similar to that, then you can definitely do that. The UI here, you'll see these little dotted strips along the different panels. Then it's gonna show a four way cross arrow and you just kind of left click and hold. And now you can bring this area anywhere you want. And if you bring it tight against the left side here, we can just go ahead and place it there. Certain buttons and things, you can hold for a second and grab those as well and then move them anywhere that you wish. And if I don't want this to be here and maybe I wanna save a little bit of space, I'll just left click and hold. And then I can drag it up to the top. 
So whatever layout makes sense for you, you're able to do that. And there are some neat UI things here as well, as far as conformity for the 3D viewport up against the panels. If you move this, you think it's already gonna overlap that, but it adjusts the viewport automatically for you, just like it would in Blender. So this is very useful. And on a side note, if you come right down here, you'll see there's a viewport layout tab. If you click that, you'll have a number of preset viewport layouts. But this would be very helpful for you setting up. Quad view is one I'm gonna use quite often, I'm sure. And just keep in mind, if you change the UI a lot in the layout, then when you try to follow tutorials, it may become very difficult. So some standardized layouts may be very useful for you. Now back over in Blender, we'll get the double arrows here where we right click and you can join right, join left, do a vertical horizontal split, or even swap the areas. This is very useful. So if I want to do a vertical split, which I commonly do, and I like this size workspace for when I'm doing geometry nodes. So when I have a geometry node set up, this kind of works better for me. Instead of doing nodes in a linear fashion, I can start stacking them like they are code. And then of course, if we want, we can join right and close that up, or we can get the four way cross here and left click and pull out and do the same thing. Now in adjusting panels, we'll see that this has some similar functionality and is very useful. Now, whereas we cannot drag and drop panels and things like that in Blender right now, you can still do a nice thing like a horizontal split here. And I can switch this workspace and add a timeline or something to that effect, whatever it is I would need. Then I can press N down here if I want to kind of get rid of that and I can have a timeline right here. And now the UI can be more customizable to the way you want it. You're also able to add a new workspace here in Blender, anything that you want, and then you can customize it. If I want a new UV editing, I can add that. And if I want to add some extra panels in this, something like an image editor would make sense here. And then you can come over here and you can double click, remove, and call that your custom space. Now in this next and final segment where I'm going to show you guys a comparison between Blender 3D and Autodesk 3ds Max, we're going to set up a very basic scene with a couple of objects, camera, and a light. Now just keep things super simple. You can drop in something like a plane. You can drop in a cube. I'll scale this down. I'm actually just going to turn on snap for a second and I want to snap this to the face and align rotation to the target and if it's not going where you want you can strain it on Z and then try again boom that looks good now from here I can just throw in a simple light something like a spotlight doesn't matter I'm always going to scale these just a touch make sure to turn off snap I want to add a constraint and do a track to and boom so now you've got a basic scene with a light that's going to work for you. And if we go into EV Engine here, we can take a look. And there's a lot of really cool controls and Blender is very, very versatile in that area and add-ons make it probably the most powerful as far as modeling, but that's definitely up to you to decide. Now I've got this basic scene set up here with a similar setup. And I'm going to export this as an FBX with selected objects into 3ds Max. Now to set things up properly in 3ds Max, we're going to need to change a couple things. So we've actually got a standard layout. These are like little layout schematics. Uh, we can select an actual quad view. And now in 3ds Max, there's a number of different things like production rendering mode, interactive rendering mode, and then active shade mode and they have the Arnold Renderer. These are actually pretty good and seem to be more like a realistic real-time render, kind of like a faster version of Cycles, which is actually pretty good if you've got a GPU. And for something like a Track 2, I can just come over and select the Area Light, and then I'll jump into the Modify tab here. There's a couple things you can do. You can change quite a few parameters 
you can also select targeted. This is actually gonna be a very cool way for you to target where your uh, light is actually going to go. And now I've switched over to the Arnold light and I can grab this and basically you've got a track too. It's actually pretty good. Now the next thing I would show you, and like I said, this is not a tutorial necessarily as much as it is an overview of transfer of skills. If you right click right here with that selection, I could hide selection and do a number of different functions in here. This is a right click menu just like Blender has. And that right click menu in Blender is something of course that if you have the key map changed like I continuously do, then you'll not have it. But if you go ahead and select that, you'll have it. And a lot of add-on developers will use this to throw in some special commands and operators. So the takeaway for you guys today is that you can use Blender as a stepping stone or you can develop your skills with Blender and be really awesome at one thing, two things, three things. Idealistically, if you want to use it to make money, you would want to get good at whatever it is that you enjoy doing, whether that be sculpting, modeling, hard surface modeling, VFX, animation. And if you choose to use 3ds Max, there's nothing wrong with taking Blender, learning it, helping support the community as you move along to kind of pay it forward and then moving into something like 3ds Max or Maya or something else. I really appreciate you guys watching and I appreciate you guys taking a look at Blender and possibly helping to support it. I'll put a link in the comments for the development fund. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.